What's up, Brian? What's going on, buddy? <laughs> this is fun, man. Thanks Another for being in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Um, now this is good, man. I mean, and uh, it's like, I mean, we talked about this for the past couple of days and everything, and you know, um, the whole idea of this is since mid March, everything's changed for us, and I see how you've been adjusting. And I see how, well, uh, first of all, you and I go way back. You know, we go back to high school, middle school. So we've been friends a long, long time, you know. Long. And, and I see, uh, you know, I know you do. I know your wife. You know, you do a little girl. And um, I've just seen how you've grown. And I saw when you got into this business. And I, I see how much you care about people. You know what I mean? And I see how much you 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 love to help people. And everybody that I've talked to so far, that's the common denominator in everyone, you know, is that they just really love helping the, their clients and helping them grow, you know? And uh, fitness is a way to help them grow. And since everything changed over these last few weeks, some people have sort of sat back and other people have leaned in, you know? And I've seen you lean in and adjust. And you know, people are going through a lot right now, you know, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And we talked before about how you and the, your relationship with the people that you're working with is, is so important, you know, just over and above fitness, you know? And um, I see you making adjustments. I see how you're connecting with people. And, um, you know, it's, it's really special, man. And so just talk about like, your background, how you got in the business, when you started, and how you got to be where you are right now, first off. Um, okay, well, uh, obviously, uh, sports for me was big growing up. Just like you, um, sports give you a positive outlet and a way to gain self-confidence, learn teamwork, and the biggest thing is relationships with other people and how to interact with them in a positive way. And um, so through sports, I obviously got interested in fitness because there always comes a time when sports ends for us. I mean, we get older, we don't, um, none of us are Tom Brady, 43 years old, still playing in the NFL. Like that's a one in a trillion shot. So for most of us, sports will end either in high school or college and then that's it. So for me, I think when sports ended, I felt lost. I felt like I lost that sense of, um, connection with that was my way of gaining confidence and I felt like when that ended I lost I lost a piece of myself and I had to figure out a way to recapture that because it affected me it affected yeah. me personally it affected me physically it affected me uh, mentally um, so the only way that I could figure out how to gain that passion or get that passion back was either through coaching or fitness or both which I did I, you know I love coaching unfortunately mm -hmm demands a lot of your time at times it's not convenient if you have as you know if you have you're trying to juggle a regular job yeah. and practice or games at 3 30 and then yeah. given up Friday and Saturday night that you have when you have yeah. a family credit to you who is a uh, you're, you're a football coach a successful one um it, it demands a lot so anyway for me it has had to be uh, fitness. So I had a passion for it. I went to school for fitness and kinesiology, fitness specialist. Um, and I really threw myself into training, that other aspect to sports. If you train hard, if you work hard, you're a better athlete. So I kind of figured out a way to um, stay passionate about sports in another way, which led me to fitness and the fitness industry. So yeah. that's yeah. the, yeah. that's kind of, I got started. And, you know, what, what you mentioned too, man, was such a great point is that, you know, at some point the music stops, you know what I mean? At some point, you know, the average, I was thinking, I don't know what the statistics are, but, you know, most athletes, they're either done at 18 or 23, you know, and that's it, you know, and really in your early 20s, you're probably at the peak fitness level of your life, you know what I mean? And if you've been training since 14 to 23 or 13 to 23, you're at this peak shape or 14 to 18, whatever, and now you can't do that thing anymore. You know what I mean? And right. I, I get it. You know, I understand that. I think a lot of athletes do understand that. But 
the thing that's cool about what you just said is, is that you understand how much it means to you and how important it is to you. And what I see in what you do is how much you want to, you want to share that with your clients. You, you can. Know? Yeah. You can share that to them by, by teaching them how to work out and feel better about themselves. Not just physically either. Looking in the mirror and seeing what you want to see is great. But yeah. it's what comes from the inside from working out and how you feel when you're done and how you feel every day waking up feeling better that right. you can give to them. It does take time. And I think that's where trainers are crucial. You got to keep people motivated until they feel that. And then when they do, you got to keep them pushing because um, if you stop, it, you just go right back to the way you work. So staying consistent with training is important too. And that's why I have a job. But it, you right. have to be make people buy into that and it's the best gift that you can buy if you can if you're willing to receive it which takes time but right right so you so when did you start so when, well, when you first started working with people did you start working with individuals one-on-one -on -one, or did you start working with groups like how did you come to be yeah um it's a good question so it was really hard for me to i knew this is what always i knew this was always what i wanted to do but i could never figure out way to make it a full-time job so like yeah. i would be at the gym and people would ask hey man can, can, you, can you help me with this can you help me with that can you train me and it was always well i will if i have time but i have uh, on the side and then i started doing it part-time um trying to try and grow it a little bit um and then um, credit to my wife when i met my wife and we would talk about our what we were passionate about and what we really wanted to do with our lives. She knew that I was not happy in the job. I think I was doing project management, project coordination for construction. Uh, and I just hated it. And, yeah. um, we sat down and we talked about, it. she's like, you're doing this on the side anyway, let's figure out a way to grow the business, give it a year and see if we can get it to where it needs to be. And because of that support from her and her pushing me in that direction, we, uh, Schmidt Fit evolved, um, and we we grew it, and we've been very fortunate to have the clients that we have. My client retention is one thing that I'm most proud of. Um, it's one thing to get a person to contact you and say, "Hey, I want to do training," and you have them for a month and they're gone. Um, mm -hmm. eight, 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 I have been with me over two years, so that's pretty cool. And I work with about 13 people before all this stuff happened, and I'm just one guy, so 13 clients for me is, yeah. is great. Busy. Um, their client retention, I'm a little proud of it. These people want to keep coming back to me. I never dreamed that it would evolve into what it has. So I'm very grateful to be able to do what I love to do. Um, and for being able to have met the people that I've met through this, and they believe in me and I believe in them. And that's kind of how it works. And I've made some great friends uh, through this, people that have um, done things for me that, that I never even imagined. I'll give you one example. Um, Christmas this past Christmas I had four clients that got together I went out <clears throat> I forget what I was doing I was going somewhere and I left and I came back and there's four cars outside of my house that I recognized but I'm like nah they probably just look like the cars that my clients drive I can't why would they be here <clears throat> right after we had our little girl and I walk up the steps and sure enough there's four clients sitting in my living room um, with a Christmas gift for me and that, like, that's the kind of stuff that I never thought uh would happen like through this I've made some really good friends I've met some really good people and this stuff matters to them so yeah. much to, on a holiday they're coming out to my house to right. surprise me and show me uh that I'm important to them so like it's pretty amazing so uh, it's you know yeah it's no yeah I mean and, and I can tell you know just from what I know of you I mean that that doesn't Th that doesn't surprise me because I know how much you love what you do and I know how much, yeah. how, how meticulous you are. And it, it, I know how much you want to help your clients and, and, and to get what you have inside of you onto them. Like you pour it into them, you know what I mean? And so it, it's only that connection that would cause somebody, I think, to want to come to your house on Christmas Eve and give you a gift. You know what I mean? Correct. Like, like it wasn't. It was like around Christmas time. I think it was like a day or two after Christmas. But you know, you see what um, I'm saying? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and some of them they don't live very close. Like one of them was one that I drive to, 
uh, to media, I drive to her house to train her. So she drove all, it, it probably took her about over 45 minutes to get to my house. She brought a little yeah. girl, girl with her and um, to, so to your point, yeah, it, it's a big deal to see yeah. these people gratitude like that. Um, you know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, so talk so talk about your um your, your process. I mean, I remember, like I said, when you were first getting started out, and you know, you were working with one person here, one person there, and just building it part time into full time. But now that you're more established, you got the gym in your house. I mean, you know, you went from training people. And not that you you still can and will, but now yeah. you got a facility in your sure. house. When someone reaches out to you and like, I need some help. What's what's your process? How do you start from the beginning? Well, so like like you said, like at, at first it was a little erratic. Like you're trying to figure out places you can go to yeah. not be bothered to train. Like and to, you know, I trained your wife before yeah. your wedding. Yeah. Started outside at a park for an hour, yeah. like times a week and that's yeah. what we had to do, and that's what we did and it was great but to have a place where people can come and feel safe now yeah. um we put a lot of time and effort into building the studio it's a studio where they have a clean safe environment it has a private entrance in and out it is um just them and me working mm -hmm. hard for an hour working on their specific goals and their needs and um when they come here, they know that they're getting out of this what they want. And when they leave, it's done. But they have a place they can come with zero distractions, nice equipment, and um, alone time with their trainer, which I think is important um, because the atmosphere that you work out in um, has a lot to do with your success. If you're motivated and, you, and your place where you work out gets you going uh, um, and gets you motivated, you need that. So if I can make that environment for them um, – one where they're comfortable they come in they put their own music on they get on the treadmill they start warming up and by the time they're done i'm ready to go you know we have a system that we follow when they come in that they know exactly what to do and to get ready and, and it's pretty cool it works it takes some time to get uh to that to that point it, it, you know it's about a two-week um learning curve for right. the training you know if you, if you ever take on anybody new um takes about two weeks to really get to know each other and get to know what their limitations are, if any, and how, how hard you can push them. Mm -hmm. um, so once that learning curve is gone after that two week buffer, um, you just come in, you get after it and that's it. But having the studio like we have now, and I think we've had, I think it's been about two years now. It's crazy how fast time flies, but mm -hmm. this studio has been here about two years now. Um, and it's been great. I have a few clients that I still go to because they have demanding schedules and they need me there mm -hmm. super early in the morning before they go to work and they can't leave. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. But um, the majority of them come here and it's a safe place for them to work out and know that they're getting what they're paying for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a workout that's going to get them to their goals or exceed them. Right, right, right. And so, so, the, because everything's so personalized with the people that you're working with, um, you're working with people of all different fitness levels. That, yeah, that's what I was going to, um, you're, that's a great, uh, thing to put out there. So range of like ages, I've had 13 year old kids all the way up to 83 year old women. I have an 83 year old that I still work with to this day. He's been with me almost four years. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I have kids that are involved in sports. I have a hockey player that I'm working with right now who's about to start playing junior hockey. It's amazing. He's going to go live in Canada and stay with a host family for his senior yeah. year of school so that he can yeah. get. So, I, you know, a kid that I, and another kid that plays baseball. But then I have all these other people from every end of the spectrum, from 30s all the way up until 80s that I work with that were able to customize a program for them. And obviously, all those programs are different. Yeah. So. That's what we can provide. And I'm a huge advocate for other programs too. I have clients who do CrossFit. Mm -hmm. I have clients who do elsewhere. You need to keep it fresh. So I, yeah. I never, if someone says to me, hey, I'm going to go try Orange Theory or mm -hmm. I'm going to go try CrossFit Explode, mm -hmm. you will never see me say, hey, don't do that. You come mm -hmm. here. No, it's not. You want to mm -hmm. go out and see what? Go. If you can get enough variety and, and, mm -hmm. and, to keep your program fresh, I love that. So I never like to be uh, labeled as like, this is what I believe in, this is what you should do. Yeah, I want you to come here, I want you to do it, it'll work. But yeah. I also 
think that you should add some variety to your routine. So I have clients that do orange theory twice a week, come to me three times a week or uh, come to me twice, go there three times or go to CrossFit, you know? So I, I feel like the fitness industry is a family. I feel like that, that we all try to support each other and, um, uh, I'm only one tiny little speck of what's out there, but I do think that what I do works, uh, and I do love what I do and that's what it takes to be a good trainer. And now with everything that's going on right now, I mean, like you said, when we first sat down to talk today, it was a total gut shot and you can either sit down and accept it or you can try to adapt and evolve. And honestly, when it first happened, I was crushed. This is going to destroy my business. I can't have anyone coming here. What am I going to do? I never did virtual training before. I don't know how to do this. I don't like it. I don't, I can't see them. I can't correct them. Well, after giving it a shot, like I'm doing virtual sessions now and we're getting, we're doing it and it's working and I ask for feedback when they're over and I've gotten good feedback. So you do what you have to do. I mean, it's different and it's not the same as what I'm used to, but it's working. And if that's what we have right now, it's what we got to do. And I think the cool thing is that um, the, the, the biggest message I would want to get out there to people is don't be frustrated if you're not sitting around a bunch of equipment. I have this equipment because this is what I do. I don't expect everyone to have all this stuff. You yeah. need very basic stuff to get through a good workout, a set of dumbbells, maybe an exercise ball and a mat. Uh, and we can customize a 45 minute workout that's going to kick your butt that when you're done, you're going to say, wow, I couldn't have done that on my own. And that's what yeah. we want to give to people. But uh, it's just crazy. I never in a million years thought that I would be saying that uh, click on your computer. I can train you from here. Like, yeah, you know? well, uh, well, that's that's the thing. When we were talking, I think it was yesterday. The biggest thing with having, you know, a trainer that you trust and that you like is the ability to provide someone with a 45 minute to an hour workout without any equipment, you if know, you, and, and people need help with that. You know what I mean? If you can find somebody that can do that, you got yourself a solid trainer because it is not easy, but that's yeah. what we do. So we should know how to do that for you. And, and, yeah. if, and if I know how to do that, then I need to rethink what, how I'm doing things. And, and I, I can do it. I've learned that I can do it. It's not the same, but you got to push yourself sometimes. And like I tell my clients, you got to push through it and you got to believe that you can actually achieve this. So I had to tell myself the same thing when all this happened. Yeah. Who are you to tell these people that they need to push through something if you're not even going to try and adapt with this thing right. and figure out how to get them good workouts without the stuff that you have in your house. So you right. Know, right. For me, like we all have had to um, strap in and, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, really try and figure out how to make the best of this. So, yeah. Well, there's no other choice. You know, there's no, no other choice. It, you know, so yeah. yeah. You know, we just got to make the most of it. And it, one of the things that you that we were talking about before is, you know, not only is it the metal hurdle that you have to overcome with, you know, being confined and all these weird things that can happen in people's brains that I know that your clients are talking to you about the things they're struggling with just to get them up and going. Their routine is upended. You know, there there is a morning. Oh. Wednesdays and Saturday, but also their diet. Oh man. Yeah. Especially <laughs> right now. I mean, I, myself included. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things that you justify to yourself when you are on lockdown like this is, well, there's nothing else to do. That bag of chips is there. I'm going to go ahead and eat them and um, watch some more Netflix. And, you know, and tomorrow I'll do the same thing probably because I can't do anything else. Well, right. it, Huge, man. And one of the things that we're really focusing on this next year at Schmidt Fit is nutrition counseling and meal plan. Uh, my wife has been on maternity leave since our daughter was born back in November, and she's lucky she has a really great uh, maternity leave, but she has put that to good use. And the last year, she's been becoming a certified uh, health coach. So she can now um, design nutrition plans, meal planning, and um, and uh, going to that avenue, and on top of that, you know, we have the hummus business, Schmidt Tips, where we make gluten-free um, uh, hummus, uh, which yeah. is a healthier version of hummus, but diet is huge, so eating the right things, I mean, it has never been more important. Trying to figure out good carbs versus bad carbs, uh, your calorie intake, um, I mean, it's huge, especially right yeah. now. Yeah. I, um, people I keep hearing are saying that they're eating like crap, and they're not happy with themselves, and, like right. you said, you gotta yeah. do something about it. 
which is get on a regular workout program and start eating right or accept the fact that when this is all over, you're not going to want to take your shirt off at the beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm that guy with the shirt on in the pool this year. <laughs> Don't be that guy. <laughs> um, so well, the thing is, is that, you know, it's funny, man, because I, I mean, I'm so I'm 42 now. Right. Yeah. I'm 42. And um, yep. yeah. And so I'm thinking I'm thinking like over the past, we'll say like, you know, 20, 15 years or so. And, you know, you see your metabolism start to change, you know, as time goes on. I remember 24 was a big change. Yes. Kind of was similar. But then I remember it was somewhere in my mid thirties that, or no, early thirties that I realized that I can't eat whatever I want anymore. No, after, and, after 28 is when it really starts to is take that what another it is? Yeah, after yep. 28. And then I realized that, you know, cause you know, growing up like we did, you know, from 13 to 19, you're in the gym all the time, whatever. And, you know, even your early twenties, you can, you know, miss workouts for a couple of weeks and you just snap right back. And then it was probably my late thirties that I realized I can't miss workouts and snap right back anymore. You know, everything, everything right. changed. And now where I'm at that I'm realizing is that everything I put in my body matters, you know, and yeah. uh, every workout that I miss matters. You know, it, it has a real significant effect if I don't have good habits today. Oh, you know right. I mean? yeah. 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 So, I mean, like, cause, and so you're dealing with people that are, you know, because like I said, you're not you know, I'm not Tom Brady. I'm not some former pro athlete. You know, I'm not that guy. So, you know, you're working with people that are working people, professionals, families that have similar stories. You know what I mean? So yep, exactly. you know, like what are some of the things that you see, especially now that people are struggling with mentally that you have to help them overcome? Um, you know, one of the biggest things that I see, and, and regardless if we're, if we're looking at COVID-19, which is the situation we're in right now, which has changed some things, or before that, everyone has a life and a schedule that they need to, um, to follow. So one of the biggest things with health and fitness is where do I fit that in with my daily routine and be able to make it work? Mm -hmm. So the biggest hurdle for people is how do I fit it in? How do I stay consistent? And it, and how do I adapt to this level of fitness that I know I need to have right now in order for me to live my best life? And living your best life is not looking in the mirror and seeing a six pack. It's looking in the mirror and saying, okay, I can deal with this guy. I, I like what I see, or I feel good about myself. I don't care what other people see. I look in the mirror. I know I'm doing the right things. Therefore I feel better mentally and physically. And everyone's got a different range of like their physical ability, but um, it's the way you feel that, that projects um, your, you know, your overall appearance to people and in life and in fitness and in the professional world. That's so important. Whether you're talking to your kids, your wife, your boss, your, your friend, like, how do I get what this guy has? He seems like he's doing great. I will mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I'm not saying the key and the answer to life is health and fitness, but it sure helps. And yeah. I think the biggest thing for people is where, how do I fit that in? So the, what I see people struggling with is a, the fitness routine and the workout stuff is, is hard for them to figure out how to get on something consistent and stay that way. And then how mm -hmm. to know how to change it up. So they keep, getting better and they don't hit that plateau and get frustrated and then b is the diet mm -hmm. the biggest thing is diet 70 percent diet 30 percent fitness so i could work out six days a week for an hour and a half a day if i go and i eat burger king or mcdonald's right after i'm into the chips and the junk every day i'll mm -hmm. probably stay the same i yeah. might get a little bit of results but i'll probably stay the same but if you factor in that diet part of it that 70 percent the yeah. change like like that so um people struggle with that the diet planning stuff so yeah. um it's where how to how to do it how to make it part of your life and how to so there are people that can help with that and then yeah. once you get people on it it's really not that hard it's just it's a lifestyle change yes yes struggle with it, their yes. work life the kids the activities so that's the biggest struggle i see is whether i'm dealing with someone who has two kids mm -hmm. a husband and both work or uh, one of my clients that is a little bit older, retired, has a, a husband or a wife to, to take care of, and they have a daily routine, and they mm -hmm. still struggle with the eating. So it's figuring out how to meal plan, how to count out, 
and uh, how to put something together that's the whole package. So that's the biggest thing people struggle with. How do I put it all? I got this piece, but how do I get this right. piece? How do right. I put it all together so it all works? So right. um, that's what I see people struggle with the most. Yeah. And one of the, a couple of things you said there that, that really hit me is the person that you see in the mirror that you're satisfied with that person where they are right now. You know, yep. and it's not about the physique. It's about the commitment, the, the feeling that you get as the result of committing to a process and making progress in that process every day. You know what yep. I mean? That's what yep. lights you up. You know what I mean? That's yep. what makes you feel like you're changing and growing because you yep. are. You know, if, if you're not, you know, if you're just waiting to hit that goal weight number or have a certain look in your physique, you know, you're just stressed out and unhappy along the way. And it's the process is where you're actually living your life. You know, exactly. so you know, if you're not satisfied in those days, I should check that and say learning to be satisfied in those days yeah. is, where, is where the peace of mind is. You know what I mean? Is, is where the reward is, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it- friends and that's the thing like this it's not a race that you're going to finish it's a race that you're going to have to pace yourself because it goes on your whole life so there's right. no there's no finish line like if your right. finish line is looking in the mirror and seeing a statue of the perfect body if you stop two months from now it's not going to look like that. you just need to pace yourself and 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 just be okay with this becoming part of your life like whatever else you do if it's church if you go to church if it's church if it's uh family time whatever else your life you know whatever else your process is in life and things that you do normally this needs to become that too this needs to find a, a way into your life where it becomes normal and if yeah. it does you do look in the mirror and you say all right i, I feel good i, I I'm, I'm doing what i should be doing yes. for my if you're not healthy you're no help to your family if i can't work if i can't uh, be a good dad, a strong dad, a strong husband. I, I can't help my family. Right. So, and I'm staying strong physically as much as I am strong mentally. And um, I'm, you know, okay with myself. And I know that I'm as healthy as I can make myself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's important. what's that? It's important. I mean, yeah. it is. And so, yeah, that's it's why the, it's, it's the it's baseline why. of everything. It's the baseline of everything, you know. And, you know, if we're not, it's it's a humble process you know what i mean it's because like you said it is a marathon it's not about and that's and that's that's why so many of these in my opinion these crash diet fads don't work because what what you're required to do to lose x amount of weight and x amount of days it's not sustainable it's not not no it's not yeah so yeah you just hit the nail right on the head none of those quick fixes are sustainable and the word the, the, the definition of the word sustainable is longevity. You cannot do that mm-hmm. forever. And this is a forever thing. So find out the healthier way to do it and stick to it. Dedicate 45 minutes to an hour, you know, four days a week and you're good. And then your diet should be every day. And, you know, you may have a cheat day here and there and that's okay. Yeah, you have to have fun, but, you know, there are guidelines and they're pretty simple. Mm-hmm. If you follow them, you know, this stuff works. But now, Mm, yeah we need everyone we're, we're grasping at straws to figure out what's going to make us happy because sitting in the house is not it and right. that's what we do right now so maybe this helps no it does you know because we <laughs> right now we can control so little you know what i mean and so the one thing that we can control is what we eat and you know if or if we don't work out you know and if you're if you got shitty habits around those two things you're going to feel even worse about yourself. And I'm, I'm talking from my own experience, you know? I, yeah. You know? Me too. So, you know, if you make it a point to get out and then get in touch with somebody like you that can help, and t- you know, really take you where you are right now and say, okay, look, you're eating this right now, or you're not working out, or you are working out this amount of times a week. Let's just start with that and make this little change this week. You know, then we'll make a change next week. And then you'll just consider, continue to see growth over time. And over the next three months, you'll be living a completely different lifestyle. You know what exactly. I mean? Because of the little changes that you're making week after week. I don't know. I mean, like, it just seems to me that people get it. And I'm, I'm guilty of this is that, you know, I get really excited. I want to do something new. I want to jump into it. I want to go hard. And then you go hard for a week. You burn out. You get hurt or whatever. And you can't do it the next week. 
Yeah, and that's that's the struggle, and that's where you know having somebody that kind of help you you through this so that doesn't happen is huge. And uh, there's examples, and it's pretty easy to see them if you're in the, the the fitness industry. You know, a lot of us have clients that come and they work out and they and they do great. They work out real hard. Just it, listen, if you're coming to me, you're working out like they're not. I have you for an hour. You're gonna you're gonna work out hard for an hour. What you do when you leave here, I don't control that. I can't help you with that. I can't yeah. help, but I see it in my clients that are working out and eating right on their own. Yeah. They get the, the maximum, and I have examples. I'm not, I'm not here to, to name names, but I'm very proud of them. The ones that actually work out on their own when I'm not with them, mm -hmm. and the ones that discipline themselves with the eating habits are, are the ones that I look at, and I'm like, wow, yeah. you don't even know how great a shape you're in but i can see it and it's, yeah. it's those you know those are the those are the differences and then there, you have uh people that love to work out but when they work out that's it they don't change the other habits and that's fine you know but if you really want to see some change you do what these people do which is discipline yourself when you're when you're not with a trainer too and train yourself to live that way and eat right and uh put the whole package together and you'd be amazed at what you can see in even three months of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's crazy. It works. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy, but it works. So you're working with people virtually. You're trying, trying to, you're, you're doing that. You're doing that. So if people see this and they're like, man, you know, I want to, I want to get started. How do they, how do they find you? So, I mean, we have, we have a website, uh, schmidtfit.com. Uh, how do you spell that? You know, um, S C H M I D T F I T T, two T's. Um, but then also, we're on Facebook, um, yep. we're on Instagram, phone numbers on Instagram, phone numbers on Facebook. You can call me anytime, 484 843 3710. And honestly, it's, um, I have a lot of people who I talk to who are like, all right, well, you know, what if I don't like it? Well, you're not going to like it at first because it's not something that you're used to doing and we don't like change. I'll tell yeah. you what, the first session's free. If you don't feel like I did something good for you by the time that's over, you don't feel like you got a workout, mm -hmm. um, then you, you know, but I've never had anyone not come back after that first workout, but it's an honest question and something that I might ask the trainer, Hey, w let me try one. All right, yeah. let's try. One. Right. And, don't feel it but yeah i mean uh we're on facebook we're on instagram we have a web page uh, mm -hmm. it's all under schmidt fit if you google it just make sure you spell fit with two t's and you'll see it all come up um but uh yeah, yeah I'm, you know i'd love to work with anyone who's willing but it has not been an easy transition for people and i get that yeah so yeah try yeah. try it and um because i know, i know for me all the adjustments that I have to make in, in the business that I'm in, I see some things that I'll be able to continue to do after things start to open up in our society. You know what I mean? Um, people are really liking online showings, online this, online that, you know, so I have a much more streamlined online process for me. Do you, That's do you, awesome. yeah, yeah, that, that, do you see yourself that. kind of going that route a little bit more? Not to say that you're going to specialize in virtual training, but do you see some of those things changing for you? Yeah, I mean, it's a great to be able to have this in the back pocket as a way to, let's say you're on vacation and you're my yeah. client. Well, dude, I'm in, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Colorado and I'm going to miss my workouts. Well, you know what? They have a gym at your resort or, you know, take your iPad down there, set me up in the corner and we'll do a virtual session. So, yeah, man, I, yeah. I think you can bring good out of anything. And in times like right now, you really need to find the good in in, in this mess and if one good thing is that I know know, know how to do a virtual session now with people yes. that are on vacation or if uh, I can't get together with them yep. uh, yeah yeah I, I see myself using it as a tool now so that's good that's good that's good man I love to hear it Ryan yeah. this has been fun man this has yeah. been good yeah um, I really appreciate it and I, I really like I said um, in a text to you last night, the stuff that you're doing right now, the positivity that you create through these things that you're developing and finding ways to communicate to the community and get the word out there about anything, small businesses, uh, people that are just trying to find a way to get new information. It's amazing. I, I I'm a trainer. I wish I had the energy that you have. Man. <laughs> so, 
So, um, so credit to you for, for putting this together and finding ways to reach out and communicate with people. I think it's awesome. So I appreciate you doing it with me. Thanks, Ryan. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put all your info um, in the follow-up clip, your website, email address, phone number, Instagram handles. Your, your IG is, is really good, you know, showing your workouts. It's so motivating, man. Like you guys as trainers and, and people that are in fitness, Instagram is, is awesome yeah. for you guys. Yeah. It's huge. It's really good. Get that visual. Yeah. 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 It, keeps, it makes you want to get going. So I'll put all that there. People will know how to get in touch with you. This has been good, man. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, Ryan. Stay fit. I will. Yeah, all right. I want to see you. I want to, how about you and I do a virtual workout? You're going to get me to commit to that on, on, on this? What? Online. All right, right, all right, all right. You don't have to tell me the day and time right now. I'll hunt you down because I know how to find you. <laughs> all right, but, all right. Yeah, and, all right. and we'll, we'll tape it, and then you yep. can broadcast that, and when you're done, you can show them how sweaty you are and how you feel, and then, so, yeah, all to be right. on the time and date, but, yeah. I'll do it. I'll all do right. it. All awesome. right. Awesome. All, all right. right, later. See you, buddy.